This is the craziest sport you will ever see on the water. Most of these boats don't have seat belts, roll cages, and forget about a windshield. These are drag boat racers. These are guys who have decided that it's a great idea to bolt a thousand or more horsepower to a piece of wood and fiberglass, and then try to go as fast as they can down a liquid racetrack that is constantly moving. This is drag boat racing. Most of you know me, you know, working on cars and filming roadkill videos, but for the last 10 years, I've been drag racing boats on water. My buddy Jeff Conrad won a championship in the 10 second bracket in 2011, and when he wanted to step up in class, he bought my boat and jumped right into the nine second bracket. This season, I've been acting as Jeff's crew chief because his new boat goes about 20 miles an hour faster than his old boat, and that's a big jump in speed on the water. After running one race in June just to get his feet wet in the new boat, we headed to Firebird International Raceway in Chandler, Arizona to see how he stacked up against the best drivers in the world. Jeff's boat is powered by a 582 cubic inch Chevy engine that I built back in 2007. It's got an aluminum block, aluminum 12 degree profiler cylinder heads, a tunnel ram, and twin 1150 Holley Dominator carburetors. It makes about 1160 horsepower without nitrous or any kind of power adder. It's actually more power than Jeff needs to run nine seconds, but that gives us an advantage in tuning for different tracks and different weather conditions. We're gonna go lay down a run right now that's hopefully like a 901 to start with, I hope. So, it's time to go racing. The World Finals are the Super Bowl of drag boat racing. And it's unique in that you've got a full day of test and tune to practice, and then you've got two days of qualifying, and on Sunday, the gloves come off and you're racing for the title. Jeff is racing in the top eliminator class, which is a fancy way of saying the nine second bracket. Bracket racing is harder than heads up racing because you're tuning to a thousandth of a second. You're trying to run it exactly on the edge of breaking out. My job as crew chief is to account for the weather and how that affects the boat, and then I tune the engine and the jet pump to make sure the boat runs as close to nine triple zero as possible. Just leg all the way out. Get it, dude, have fun. All right, bud. Just like the car drags, our race boat is towed to the track. And once it reaches the water, it's towed to the starting line by a jet ski. The starting line is actually a rope stretched across the lake. And you'll have 20 or 30 boats holding onto this rope. You hit the gas pedal in anticipation of the tree going green. Now, unlike a car race, the boats are stationed about 125 feet away from those beams. And the reason for that is when you hit the gas pedal in a boat, it doesn't just go forward, it goes up. So these boats tend to leap out of the water and then land. So they give you that 125 feet to make sure that both boats jump out of the water, land back in the water, and then break the beams and start the race. Qualifying for us was a little bit sketchy because we'd never run Jeff's boat in this configuration at this track before. We have Jeff Conrad out of Costa Mesa, California. All right, come on, baby. Low nine right now. Yeah! Woo! Fuck yeah! We ran a 9005. Number two qualifier. I will take it. I will totally take that. <laughs> Oh, that was awesome. it feels good. I'm not even driving and I'm happy. It feels good. Good first pass. When it came off the trailer and ran a 9005, I was ready to throw a party because that was a shot in the dark right there. And it gave us a killer baseline for tuning for our other passes. I get to keep my job as crew chief for a little while longer. Uh, we can quit now and that's a really good qualifying number. I think we're second, but we're gonna keep making laps so that as the weather changes, we can see how it affects the boat come race day. Hopefully we have a tune-up for this thing where in any weather condition, it's gonna run the number we need. Boats in gear, battery's on, header plugs are out, air is on, it looks sexy, you're good. Go get them.
hoping for an 01. It ran a 905. And the air is just, the elevation's going way up really fast. We're at almost 3,600 feet now. So when we were in the pit, it was at 33. And by the time you actually made a pass, it had gone to 35. So yeah, we're going to have to get a little more aggressive then. There are two factors that affect a boat race, the weather and the water. But whatever happens out on the water in terms of is it rough or is it smooth, that's mother nature, you're not fixing it. And the weather's the same way. All you can do is predict what the weather's gonna do and how that's gonna affect the boat's performance. Jeff's boat has an Edelbrock Quick Data data acquisition system and it's tied into the engine and the jet pump of the boat. So every time he makes a pass, the computer will tell me the engine RPM, how much water is coming out of the jet pump in terms of pressure, just everything you want to know about it, it knows. And that takes the driver out of the equation. I don't have to rely on Jeff telling me how things went. The computer's going to tell me how things went. We'll look at the weather station, and the number we look at is the corrected density altitude. Every time it gets hotter here or more humid, that number goes up, and when that number goes up, the boat goes slower. We tweak here on the engine and the jet pump to account for it try to keep the thing running as close to a nine as we can. At the end of day one, we felt great. We had two killer passes that gave us a great tune-up for going into day two of qualifying. The mornings are a little rough at drag boat races because you're hung over and if you're not up by 5.30 or 6 in the morning, you're being woken up by a cackling set of headers outside your trailer. My mornings are spent plugging in the oil heater and just getting everything ready so that when the driver's up and ready to go, his equipment's ready to go. Day two of qualifying here at Firebird Raceway. Day one couldn't have gone any better. Kind of had the luxury of getting after it and trying to get even closer to a 9 triple O. It's real interesting ever since Jeff made that pass, when we go to the staging lanes, We've got 26 other guys in our class and they're all looking at him and his boat now because most of these guys are racing for a championship. It's the last race of the year. He just came out of nowhere and is striking fear into these guys because they want those precious qualifying points they get for qualifying number one or two. And right now he's taking some of them away. We put a tune up in the boat over an hour ago. It's much hotter. The engine's gonna make much less horsepower. So I honestly don't know what it's gonna do right now. This would be interesting. Come on, Jeff. He's run a 9005, he just backed it up with a 901. Anybody that races him is gonna have to charge it or they're gonna get their asses beat. Nice. Helicopter, dude. What do you mean? Helicopter was right over there. The the I went through, just blew the valve, and the boat just slammed right down and started doing this. I came through his uh, prop wash, his downforce prop wash at about 117, 118 miles an hour and it basically slammed my boat forward which caused it to bow steer. I lost control of it for a split second. Scared the crap out of me. It's the rush, you know? Whack the throttle and puts you back in the seat. It's just pure adrenaline. There's nothing like it. Last run of the day. We're hoping for some double O action right here. If it doesn't happen, whatever. We already had a double O earlier, so we're qualified good. We're in awesome shape for racing tomorrow. Another double O would just scare the poop out of everybody here, which that's what I'm hoping for. The boat ended up running a 901 in the morning, a 905 in the afternoon, and then a 903 on our very last qualifying pass. We were actually pretty cocky going into race day because the boat had run so good and so consistent during qualifying, and Jeff had driven so great that we thought we couldn't lose. When I woke up on Sunday, I was kind of relaxed. The night before, we actually drank beers with the person we were supposed to race in round one, and they told us they weren't gonna race. They had some handling issues with their boat, and they weren't gonna take a chance and put it in the water on Sunday. Our first pass on Sunday was a freebie. We had nobody to race, so we couldn't lose, which was good because we were racing earlier in the day than we had all week, and I didn't know how the boat was gonna run.
crap, 93? That was not supposed to happen. Thank God nobody was racing him. Back to the drawing board. That freebie pass spooked me more than any pass we made the whole weekend because Jeff cut a great reaction time, but the boat broke out by a lot. It ran an 893 pass, which it hadn't done all week, and I didn't have a reason for it. He cuts a mediocre light and goes 910 or 920. He'll be behind you the whole time. So you're out on him. If he's nowhere near you, when you hit 1,000 feet and you get into that 1188 trap, just valve it. It'll run a 910, you still win. He's going to hit this, this thing called a pop-off valve, and it's mounted to the jet pump, and it vents water up into the air, and it slows the boat down. It's basically a safety device. We're going to use it to slow the boat down just a few hundredths of a second at the end of the race to guarantee that the boat doesn't break out and run too quick. Because if he runs too quick and goes 899, we lose. Just start yeah. looking at half track. Not there. Right before 1,000 feet, you look over, and if he's not catching up, well, if he's catching up, you look and you just make sure your seat is a little bit ahead of his. Easy. You've done it before. Good luck, man. Be right. safe and have fun. All right. Switches up, dude. It's good to go. Let's go to round three. Have fun. about to puke right now. Come on, come on, Greg. green light. Green light! It ran an 8.998 second pass. That's ridiculous. I had a long walk of shame back to the pits after that scoreboard lit up. During qualifying, there were a lot of boats running down the racetrack, churning up the water, which slows it down. On race day, we raced really early in the morning. There weren't a lot of boats out, so the water was faster. That's why we broke out. In the afternoon, in round two, we still didn't have very many boats that ran ahead of us, so the track was still faster. And that's what bit us in the ass, was the water. Jeff took it really hard. He didn't blame me, but he took it really hard. The only upshot of this is by the time we packed up the pit and commiserated about what happened, he realized he has a badass boat now that will run the number, and he's a hell of a driver, and in 2013, that class is in a lot of trouble because he's coming back and he's coming back pissed off.